In today's video, I'm going to show you a mill trick that's so simple, yet so effective. Stay tuned. So I feel like I really uncovered something worth mentioning to you guys in this video. It's something that I just kind of came up with last night when I was sleeping. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm laying in bed at night, I'm always thinking of new projects, new ideas, th ways to make things easier. And I think this trick definitely fits the bill. So one of the toughest things that you're going to do as a sawmiller especially with a manual push mill, is actually getting the log in place up against the stops and clamped and secured down so you can actually mill it. The bigger the log gets, the harder it is to slide over. So this log doesn't happen to be too big, but when you get some real big monsters in the mill, pushing it over to the stops can be a challenge. Obviously you can use machinery if you have it, but you really wanna be careful because if you start pushing it with a, say a loader bucket on a tractor, it's easy to push it too much. You can push your track off get it crooked, you can damage the stops. That's why I prefer to try to do certain things by hand because ultimately damaging a multi-thousand dollar mill isn't the goal. What I've traditionally done is use the cat hook or PV, rest the bottom against the rail, and then I'll use some leverage and push the log over to the stops. Once you get over, once you get over to a certain point though, your bar starts getting more of an angle and you're losing the advantage of the leverage of the tool. So it would be great to have something in the middle of the span to pivot that tool off of and get it that last bit over against the stops. So what do you guys think of that? That was a pretty easy little trick to do. And I'll tell you what, it makes a big difference with your milling operation. Especially if you have a manual push mill like I have, you don't have hydraulics to help you move the logs around. And something like this can really make a difference. So for those interested in the details, let's get into those right now. So uni strut is basically just a U-shaped piece of steel with a bunch of holes in it. And it has tracks on each side. And it's commonly used in commercial buildings, holding things up in the ceiling such as sprinkler pipes, maybe conduit for electrical pipes, plumbing, air conditioning, um, duct work, um, you know, things like that. And you can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, pretty much anywhere that sells hardware kind of stuff. And a really good place to try, believe it or not, that's actually usually cheaper for each stick is an electrical supply house. So if you have one of those in your area, check them out. But these usually come in 10 foot sticks um, you can get different gauges. I believe this is a 12 gauge, which is the heavier, heavier version. I would probably get a heavier gauge one if you can, because it is a mill and you are going to be moving a lot of weight. But these are pretty simple to make. You get a 10 foot stick of this right now. They're going for, you know, maybe 30 bucks, $35, depending on where you buy it. So you can get three of these out of one, maybe four, depending on how wide your mill is, because different brands and different models of mills the tracks are going to vary. Mine happens to be 37 inches outside to outside. So I could get three of these from one 10 foot stick. And you can actually buy these now from Woodland Mills directly. If you have a Woodland Mills like I have, I think they call it a can't hook lever. It's basically a wider piece of uni strut and it has fingers kind of like mine. And I believe they get around hundred dollars for it. So, I mean, for a third the cost of what they get, you can do it yourself pretty easy. I mean, if you have tools and a little bit of skill, you can make one of these up in not too long at all. You can make two of them, three of them, whatever you want. So I'm probably gonna end up making two of these. I'm gonna have one in two commonly used spots in the mill that I have to push from. And I like the design of having the fingers. That way you can remove it if you don't need it and it's not in your way. I would caution you that make sure that your roller on your mill head doesn't interfere with a uni strut. That's why I like mine removable. I can move it, I don't worry about interfering with anything. But if you wanted to, you could bolt them down. You could find bolts in the track that are nearby where you want to go and make them work. Or you could drill holes in your track, which I personally wouldn't do, but you could do that. This is something that's really quick, easy, and simple that you can do and incorporate into your milling operation. I think it's going to help you a lot. 
please leave comments below if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. I'd like to give the people that stuck around and watched the entire video a little something extra. And you know, if you, if you clicked off the video already, then you're not going to see this and you're not going to see this extra tip. But for those of you who did stick around, I want to say, I appreciate that. I appreciate everyone who watches my videos in general, but I especially appreciate those who watch the whole video. They don't just watch the first few seconds or a minute and then click off, which is pretty common nowadays. So for those who stuck around, bonus time. So the uni strut is going to have a 5 8 inch hole. The problem is going to be your cant hook might have a bigger tip that won't physically fit in the hole. This log right, for example, you can see here, it just doesn't physically fit. You probably got about an inch wide hook in only a 5 8 hole. Therefore, what I would recommend you do is change out the tip because they have cant hooks, they have PVs. PVs is going to have a straight pointed tip and a cant hook is going to have an L-shaped hook tip. They're pretty much the same tool used for slightly different purposes, but the nice thing about the log right is the tips are removable. You can punch out the roll pin, which is basically just a pressure pin that has a slot down the center, kind of like a spring. Once it goes in a hole, it opens up and it has friction to keep the tip in place. So you punch out that roll pin, take your tip out, and you can buy PV tips from log right, or you could do what I did, you can make your own tip. So I basically took a three quarter inch piece of threaded rod. You could use rolled, uh, you know, smooth steel. Took a three quarter inch piece of threaded rod. I ground the end down so it was just under the five eighths inch, which fits in here nicely. And then I drilled a hole for the roll pin to go into, inserted the tip, put the roll pin back in and I'm in business. I'll keep the original hook tip in case I ever want to use it. And I might down the road weld the tip on here that's the same diameter as this, the 5 eighths of an inch. So I still get the hook function, but it also will fit in the hole of this. Like I said, if you have a PV, you're probably not going to have to worry about this because your tip will fit in the hole already. It's mainly for people that have cant hooks that might have to do this little trick to make it work. Or you could look for different size uni strut. They do make different sizes. They make wider uni strut, shorter, inch and five eighths deep is probably the most common size. And most uni strut holes are going to be about five eighths of an inch. But maybe you can find a new piece of uni strut that has a bigger hole. You could grind out the hole and make it a little bigger, but you'd have to do that to every hole. So you have all the different hole options for pushing points, or you could change the tip and your can't hook. So that's a bonus point and a bonus tip for those who stuck around.